Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun, and I hope you had a fabulous Thanksgiving. Um, that was yesterday. I don't know when this will post, but Thanksgiving was yesterday, recording time. And um, as you'll see, the dream big still sitting here. I haven't finished it. A storm blew in right as I was finishing the first video, and I had to shut everything down and unplug the machine because the thunder was coming in. And now it's been, what, two days? Two days, and I'm getting back to it. So I decided I'm going to do the Dream Big in parts one and part two. So everything before this has been is part one. Part two, um, we basically went through it. You're going to go through each pedal. You're going to find your area. You're going to design or um, line the designs up, make sure everything's working off of each other, and then run each pass. And then um, we'll advance today. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to advance. And then... Um, I'm not going to show you every pedal because I think it's going to take forever. I mean, that first video is already pretty long and it was just putting in, uh, what, five pieces? Um, and so, so there's so many camera changes and stuff. I think I might just videotape and kind of fast forward. I'll pop in um, times or I don't know. We'll see how it ends up coming out, but it's going to come out some way. Uh, but I'm not going to show you every step because, like I said, I think it's going to take forever. So I'm going to go through it. I'll probably be recording most of it. I don't know if it'll end up in the video um, because it's not going to be up close. It's just going to kind of see, like, from afar, kind of this, see what I'm doing. But um, I want to make sure that, like, when I do advance, I want to show you that. Um, maybe in the center when I get to that, you know, if, if there's anything that I feel like you need to know when you're doing this, I'll stop and then we'll talk. So we'll talk some more and it won't just be me stitching. Um, I did change thread colors. I have my next thread color, which is going to be the, the kind of, I have four kind of areas it, that I can see that in my mind makes sense where thread colors should change. So um, if four being the outside, I'm on three right now. So I changed my thread color. Um, Oh, I am going to bring you in close because, like I said, it's been a few days. I need to bring you up close and show you how I'm going to realign the designs so I can actually start and get quilting again. As always, make sure you um, are subscribed to the channel and you hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos get released. I have some really fun things coming up for Christmas, um, although those might come out before this. I don't know. You, you know me. It happens when it happens. I get excited about something and then I just release it. Um, but who knows? Make sure you like and subscribe. And then, yeah, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And uh, we'll see you in a second when I move this, uh, when I bring you close and show you how to realign after rebooting. All right, so you might not necess necessarily be able to see me, but you will be able to kind of see the screen and see the quilt top. And that's what you need to see because um, we need to reopen this and realign it. Um, before I turn the machine off, um, I did save as a workspace. So I'm going to go file workspace to open the workspace. And I saved it as dream big. So um, it's right here in my drop down menu. I can just tap dream big and that will open it. So what it's done, it's opened all of the designs that we had opened before we left. And so that's going to be pedals one through six because we had all six, although we didn't stitch out pedal six. Um, and then the um, bubble fill-ins on the outer edges. Um, it still has things grouped if they need to be grouped. Um, so everything's ready, but it's not going to be in the right spot. Let's see if it's currently showing that pedal two is sitting right here, but we know, we know pedal two is over here. We stitch pedal two out and it's over here. So what I need to do is I need to find something an element of a design, preferably an angle or a point, something that I can put my laser light on, and I need to be able to find it on the quilt top and on the screen. And a really good one in this case might be this point at the bottom of um, petal three. There's um, where those kind of fronds come off. Can you see that? It's right here. I think you can see that a little bit. Um, but um, I'm going to use these fronds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my machine until I can get the crosshairs right where those fronds are. And of course, in my case, it's going to be right here where my pin is. So I'm going to hit drag 
And I'm going to move this design and just drop it somewhere so it's easy, more easily accessible to me. So now I can zoom in to that point that I want. And I can get it really close. I'm moving my crosshairs right to that point. And it's right on there. And then once it's on there and I'm ready, I'm going to hit drag. Now it's going to move everything. So I'm going to zoom out so you can kind of see it on the screen. And I need to move my laser light to that same point on my quilt top. So you can see that the design's moving on the screen. And I'm going to put my laser light here. And then when it's in the right place, I'm going to hit drop. So now I've just moved the design and everything should be lined up pretty well. It might not be perfect because of shifting. I am using a um, really thick batting in this. So things tend to shift a little bit, um, but I do know that because um, I've done it before. So I'm gonna test a few things. I might bring my machine to, um, let's see, I'm gonna put the laser light on one of these fronds on this petal, and it looks good on that feather. I'll come back on this side. We have some feathers over here. I'll plop the machine right there, and it looks good. So everything's aligned we're good in this case um i'm gonna now put in like um petals seven eight nine ten and eleven i believe um and leave the rest of the rest of the stuff on the screen once i get those and i stitch those out i'll probably go back in and delete a little bit i don't want to leave all the screen um full of different designs as I go along because it's it's taking up um, like processing power of the tablet. So um, I might leave them to help me line up that next row. But um, once I get that next row on and stitched, I'll delete a row and then just keep the elements I need to continue working my way through. So um, I'm lined up. I'm going to get going. I'll just um, probably move the camera back and you can watch and then I'll bring you back if I need to tell you something. All right, so I have everything done and my second row is now in there. So um, a few things. I have it done, I started with piece six, so this piece far on the right. I placed it six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That doesn't mean I have to stitch it eight or six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I'm gonna start on this side and I'm gonna come down here and select the middle one, which is um, select multiple in my pro stitcher and then I'm going to tap the designs I want. I don't want that one. I want this one and just work my way across getting the only ones I want. And then I'm going to turn this off. So if I touch something else, it's not going to mess it up on my sidebar. I'm going to tap my workspace tab and I'm going to look for the group. Here's my group 33. And now I'm going to tap and make sure it's stitching in the order that I want it to. That looks good. And now I'm going to run the stitch out. Um, if this were out of order, let's say it went like something like this. So it was going to stitch out the first piece and then it was jumping over to piece six and then back to 10 and then nine, eight, seven. I can highlight the one I want. So in this case, I hit six and I can move it down because I want six to be last. And then um, that's how you change your stitch out order if something's um, not correct. So now I'm going to stitch this out. All right, so I have finished quilting out pass number two. So I did um, pedal six, seven, eight, nine, wait, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So um, the next four are um, twelve, thir or, uh, wait, some eleven. Is that right? Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and they're gonna work down. So now I need to advance. 
So there's a few the few ways I advance. If you've watched my um, video, like the um, doing uh, a whole quilt pro stitch hair start to finish, um, I usually advance drag and drop. So I would move everything and then move the design. In this case, because it's smaller and it, we want to be pretty exact, I'm going to do the needle down method. So um, I put my needle down. I tapped drop on my pro stitcher screen. And then now, um, or I tapped drag. When you touch drag, it turns to drop. Um, so it says drop. I took off my side clamps. And I'm going to go advance. But I want to do this. So now I'm going to advance it. And as I advance the quilt, the design is going to move with it. And I'm just going to advance it as far as I need to so I can get to those next four petals. <clears throat> All right, so I stopped here because I am using red snappers and the bulk of the red snapper is almost pointed towards my machine and I don't ever want that. When that's pointed out, you lose some, um, some stitch out space and it might make it look like, oh, I'm going to be able to get to it, but I wouldn't. And I don't want to come and hit bars. So I just um, kept it, uh, played it safe. Didn't advance it as far as I could. Um, if you're stitching on an Avante or one of um, or an Amara, uh, you probably would won't be able to do these four petals in one pass because I have the Avante or because I have the Infinity, I have a little more room, and I'm going to be able to do these four and then advance again because that those next rows are going to be the very bottom. So um, I advanced. I'm going to put all of my um, clamps on. And get this to the point where I, if things were lined up and I could push start, you know, get everything nice and uh, tight. And then once it's to the place that I felt comfortable, if everything were tight and ready, I could push start. That's when I hit drop. So let me get my side clamps on. All right. So um, I've tightened my bars. I have my side clamps on. They're tight. And now I'm ready to hit drop. If I were to hit drop before all of that happened, each of those shifts things just enough that things wouldn't be aligned anymore. They'd be off just a bit. So now everything's gonna stay aligned and nice. I'm gonna hit drop. I'll bring my needle up. And now I'm ready to go outline these petals and get those next four petals stitched. All right, so we've advanced. I have my new four designs set up. Let me move you so you can see the whole screen. I'm gonna tap out here so nothing's selected. Um, I'm gonna need these inner pieces at some point because we're gonna get to that inner, um, the inner part of this dream big. But right now we don't need them. So, um, or we don't need these outside pieces anymore. So I'm gonna hit my select multiple and I'm gonna pick all of the pieces that don't have anything anything in contact with this inner area i'll leave five because there's going to be a pedal here but anything out there and i can hit file close and i want to hit select it and it's only going to get rid of the the things on the outside because we don't need them anymore we want to get as many designs off the screen as we can so it's not holding up um, and using processing power. So that's how you get rid of stuff. I'll hit this button again to turn it off. Oh no, I do want to keep it on because we want to stitch out these four because those are our next four. I'll turn that off. I'm going to check my stitch out um, which one's going which. I'm going to switch these last two. I'm actually going to stitch 15 before I stitch 14 because 14 is going to be on the outer edge and I'm ready to go and I can do my next sections. 
All right, so I have only this last little patch to do. Um, I've done all the outside borders. I've done half of the very center star. I'm going to do the bottom half and then do the center piece, which is going to be a different color. So I'm going to do that one last and this thing will be done. So this is currently my setup on my Pro Stitcher screen. Um, I've deleted all of the pieces I didn't need. So anything on the outside borders, I um, took off or uh, closed because I didn't need those designs anymore. Um, I still have these designs, or you can't see the screen, but um, these designs are still um, are stitched out, but I needed them to line up everything else, which is why I still have them on the screen. The This top half has been stitched out too, but again, I needed that to line up um, the center kind of circle-y ray thing in the middle. Um, so that's why that is still on here. So I tried to get rid of everything that I didn't currently need. But um, this is what's going on. So two things as I was running through this. When you advance, be careful that you actually pick and you hit like this bottom button down here, the select all, and you select everything, all of the designs when you advance. Um, I forgot to do that a few times while I moved things and I might have moved like four petals and I needed to move the whole group. So that's one thing that I've um, realized when I was doing this. The other when I'm, I, so right now I only have to stitch out like these, um, uh -oh, these bottom pieces and it gets really hard to, you know, I'm going to hit select uh, multiple and start picking them. You keep getting, uh, you keep picking out other petals. So another way to select, um, uh, elements or designs is over on our sidebar, this workspace tab, I can tap here. And I know, because I'm looking at my diagram, I need to stitch out um, designs 39, 40, 41, 42, 44, 46. So I can come over here. 39 is already picked. So 40, 41, 42, 42. I don't think I need 43, but I need 44. And I don't need 45, but I do need 46. So now I was able to select all of those from my sidebar and not try to pick up each one individually and, um, and run the risk of getting something that I didn't need. Now that those are selected, I can come in, make sure they're going to stitch out in the order that I want. That looks good. And then now I'm going to stitch it out. And I will bring you back when the full thing is done and off the frame. All right, everyone, I'm back and it is done. The Emerald Green Big done with the Wasatch Quilting 2018 November Master Club. Um, this was fun. It was different. I mean, it's very different than just kind of going in and um, doing your own thing, but I think it turned out beautifully. I hope you can see all that texture. I'll put some pictures on my um, Facebook and Instagram, but, um, yeah, it looks great. I, again, I used Fantastico or uh, Magnifico thread. So the thread has a little bit of a shine to it. Um, there's four different colors. So I have a really bright green. Let's see if I can hold this. A really bright green here in the center. And then it kind of softens out, softens out, and then it gets a little darker on the outside. Um, it's just uh, so much texture. I love these quilts when they're done. Um, again, I used two layers of batting and they're both poly. I used Quilter's Dream. Um, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. It's the green one, the recycled one. Quil oh, Quilter's Dream Green, um, which is made from recycled water bottles and a Quilter's Dream Puff, which is a puffy poly that gives it, um, just gives it this really puffy, great texture going on here. Um, it was, it was an experience to use Pro Stitcher. Like I said, it's a lot different. Um, keep in mind those tips and tricks that I told you um, when you're moving designs and advancing the quilt and selecting designs to stitch out. But um, try it yourself. I mean, it goes pretty quick once you kind of start lining things up and you get the hang of it. And um, if, you, if you do it, post some pictures. Let me see what you're working on. And thank you for, uh, thank you for joining me. Remember, follow me Adam. So fun. And that's S E W on Facebook and Instagram, like, and subscribe the videos. Th uh, give me a thumbs up and we'll see you next time.
Bye, y'all.